Westinghouse High School in Chicago tops Bradley in all-time scoring and leads the nation with a 35.3 average per ball game. Live from the horizon in Rosemont, Illinois, tonight the DePaul Blue Demons at 13 and 6 host the Bradley Braves who have won 15 and lost 3 and are ranked 15th in the nation. DePaul Basketball is brought to you in part by Budweiser, Beechwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. True Value Hardware, it's more than our name, it's our way of doing business. Chicago Land and Northwest Indiana Honda dealers, score big with a 1988 Honda today. Coca-Cola, with Coca-Cola and DePaul Basketball, you can't beat the feeling. And by Sundag Castle Oldsmobile. Ford's done it again. Another big reason to buy from your local Ford dealer. Now up to $1,000 cash back, plus option package savings up to $2,000 more. And that's not on hard to sell models or something you don't want. Choose from America's number one cars and trucks. Ford Taurus, Thunderbird, Escort, Mustang, and the best-selling trucks. All with Ford's six-year, 60,000-mile warranty. Buy now for cash back up to $1,000, plus option package savings up to $2,000 more. Only from the quality people with quality products. Last September, the class of 2000 started school. By the time they graduate, they'll have uses for electricity we can't begin to imagine. But Commonwealth Edison has already planned to meet their demand. So the class of 2000 won't have to depend on sources outside Illinois for the electricity they need to start the 21st century. Commonwealth Edison, we're there when you need us. Hello again, everybody. I'm Joe McConnell, along with John Mengelt, live from the Rosemont Horizon. And something happened on the way to a sellout, the first sellout of the year tonight. We've got a blizzard going on outside here in the Midwest in Chicago, but that shouldn't hold things up here tonight between DePaul and Bradley. This interstate rival resuming after a lot of years uh, uh, where they have not played each other. And DePaul needs a big victory here tonight, John. They've got to try to regroup after a disheartening loss last Saturday at Georgia Tech. Well, Joey's very pleased with the way they played on the road against North Carolina State, Indiana State, and Georgia Tech. But Joey was devastated after that loss, and that cannot help but transpire over to his ball club. I think they were a little down. They need a big victory here tonight. They expected a sellout. That would have really helped them. I don't think that will affect the quality of play. We've got as fine as two backcourts as there is in the country today. Just going to say, the strength of these clubs both lie in the backcourt with Strickland and Edwards as far as DePaul is concerned, and Manuel and Hersey Hawkins, the leading scorer of the nation, leading the Bradley Braves. Don't forget, Manuel's the leading assist guy in the nation. And I think you have a little different backcourt in, in Strickland and Edwards, so it'll be very interesting to watch, especially the matchup between Kevin Edwards, who I think is just a great defensive player, and the leading scorer in the country, Hersey Hawkins. The Blue Demons need a victory over a ranked team, and Bradley is ranked 15th in the nation, and a win tonight would certainly solidify the Blue Demons' bid for an NCAA tournament berth. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the scouting report in just a moment. Well, you're the kind of man that likes to do things your own way. And you can bet it's right when you get through. And there's a beer that always fits right in your hand. Cause you're a bad, bad, bad man. This bus for you. Look what's cooking at True Value Hardware Store. It's a kitchen gadget special. And for just $3, you can choose this handy swing away can opener of durable polished chrome. Or this Martin's paddle board of natural northern hardwood. Then get a Miro 10 inch aluminum fry pan with a non stick coating. Or this anchor hocking two quart measuring batter bowl. They're just $3 each at participating True Value Hardware stores and home centers. We're back at courtside with assistant coach of DePaul, Jim Molinari, with one of his Wall Street ties on. And Jim, we need a scouting report on the Bradley Braves. Well, John, this is going to be an exciting game. The only thing bad about this game is the weather. But I'll tell you what, when you talk about Hersey Hawkins, 
Anthony Manuel, and you're talking about Rod Strickland, Kevin Edwards, just great perimeter players. I'm really excited for Kevin, though. I hope Kevin comes out here. There's a lot of NBA scouts and has a great game, and we win because he works so hard. But, but Bradley's a good team. We just got to control their transition game. Just a transition game, that's it. Transition, and I think our big guys got to do a big job of extending screen so Hershey doesn't come open on those picks because he plays well without the ball. Okay, thanks a lot. Good luck to you. Now, Joe for the starting lineup. As we mentioned, the uh, DePaul Blue Demons at 13 and 6 in quest of a victory over a ranked club after losing a couple of heartbreakers on the road down in Atlantic Coast Conference country. A five point loss to a top ranked uh, team out of North Carolina State. And then, of course, that devastating 71 70 loss Saturday night at uh, Atlanta against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, in which they hit a three pointer at the horn. So the Demons at 7 and 3 here at the Rosemont Horizon and 114 wins and just 12 losses in the eight years trying to extend their home court victory record here tonight. London Bradley, Denny Frund, and Randy Drury are our three officials for tonight's ball game. All work the Big Ten and a couple of them also double in the Missouri Valley of which Bradley is a member. Bradley is 5-2 and two in the Missouri Valley and you know John the pollsters are very very kind to Bradley. They were blown out at Wichita by a 24 point margin although Wichita shot a ton of free throws late in that ball game and that was a week ago and yet with eight of the top 20 teams losing Bradley jumped three notches from 18th to 15th in the national ranking. I don't think anybody knows who's gonna, who, who should be ranked where Joe it's going to be a tough year and a fun year in the NCAA tournament. Greg Jones getting a rare start for Stan Albeck's club tonight he's averaging 4.9 a ball game he is a 6'5 senior from Robeson High School Trevor Trempe is an outside shooter at 6'7", a senior from Havana, Illinois, averaging seven points a ball game. At center is Luke Jackson, a 6'8", sophomore from Springfield Calvary High School at 8.3 and just under seven rebounds a game. There's the nation's leading scorer at 6'3", a senior from Westing High School here in Chicago, Percy Hawkins at 35.3. And the other starter in the backcourt is 5'11", it's junior Anthony Manuel from Crane High School in Chicago, averaging 14.4 with 211 assists on the year. He is the second assist man in the country. So they have the leading scorer and the second assist man in the same backcourt for Bradley. Well, Hawkins is not only a, a great scorer, he's a tremendous player. He gets seven rebounds a game, four assists, and he plays on the defensive end, and he really doesn't force any of his offensive moves. Stanley Grundy, a 6'7", junior from Los Angeles at 12.3, the leading rebounder for DePaul, just under eight a game, starting at one forward. Terrence T. Green from Central High School in Flint, Michigan, a 6'4", junior, averaging 12.9 and just under five rebounds a game. The other forward. At center, my captain, 6'9", and senior from Jackson, Michigan, Kevin Golden, at three and a half points a ball game. And now for the Blue Demon backcourt. Like Bradley, one of the top backcourts in the nation. 6'3", senior from Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Tri captain, Kevin Edwards, at even 20 points a game. Better than five rebounds a contest with 75 assists on the year. And 6'3 junior Rod Strickland from the Bronx at 19.6. Rodney with 103 assists and 46 steals on the year. And a brief look at Joey Meyer in his fourth year as the head coach of the DePaul Blue Demons. And his uh, coaching opponent tonight is Stan Albeck, who was coach of the Chicago Bulls before replacing Dick Versace as the head man of the Bradley Braves. Stanley back coaching his alma mater. Well, we've talked a lot about the matchups in the backcourt, and, and, and as we indicated, they are two of the best backcourts in the country. I think where DePaul has to be, be very careful is this is a big, physical, very athletic, aggressive basketball team at Bradley. And I think the rebounding is going to be very, very important. And for DePaul's sake, Stanley Brunny's been playing very well of late. He's got 10 or more rebounds the last three games, 14 against Tech. He's hit 10, 12 straight field goals in the last two games. And I think that Stanley Brunny has to play very aggressive, play on the boards, very strong, and not get in foul trouble for DePaul to have a shot to win this ball game tonight. Brundy now ranking 10th in the nation, shooting 65% from the floor. DePaul in their home whites, the Bradley Braves hailing from Peoria in their road red uniforms. Boy, it's just a miserable night out of the Midwest here weather-wise. It'll take about three times as long to get to the arena, and I think by the time this one gets half over, you'll see this arena will be almost 90% full. But they it's had over, take a while to get in here. They had over 15,000 tickets sold for this game, and we've got less than 10,000 here as the ball goes up to start the ball game. Bad toss, and uh, Strickland comes up with it for the DePaul Blue Demon. 
DePaul and Notre Dame, the top two independents as far as NCAA consideration concerned. Notre Dame playing Ford in the top end today. Scoop shot to the left side, hangs on the rim, won't go as Edwards missed the cheap shot inside and Bradley comes down with it. Man with a trip, he oh. fires a three-pointer. He hits six of those in a victory at St. Louis the other night and he rips in a three-pointer to start play tonight. And that for Bradley is their 150th three-point basket of the year. They're tops in the country in three-point shooting. Well, he's a 6'7", 215-pound senior with some experience. He's one of their key players. This is a good all-around Bradley ball club. It's not a Hersey Hawkins team. Edwards, right side of the paint. Jump pass out back to Strickland. One of the things that you can do to a leading scorer in the country is make him work defensively. And right now, it looks like Kevin Edwards is moving very well without the ball. Great right pass inside and Bundy back to the line. Brundy 13 in a row, and you know, when you think you got that touch, you got it, and Brundy, who really has some trouble underneath the basket, has hit 13 in a row the last three games. Well, he wheeled 360 degrees to spin that one off the glass. Daniels tries to dish it in the corner to Johnson, and it's saved inbounds to Strickland. Two and one break behind the back feet. He drained up and into the left side on the assist by Strickland. And Paul takes the lead, four to three. Well, don't take it out of bounds if you're on either team tonight. You might not see it back. This one's going to be a run and gunner. Manuel averaging 11.7 assists a game. Pass inside, stolen away from Greg Jones by Stanley Brundy. Uses that quickness. Strickland down court. Edwards out of the right corner. Three-pointer. And it's 7-3 to three. DePaul by four now. They're on a seven-point run. Good look by Rodney Strickland. He brought the ball down the floor. Looked both sides. Edwards all alone. Three-point shot by Hershey Hawkins not there. Quick release by Hawkins. And a quick rebound by Brundy down court. Line pass, Strickland threw that one away as it split the difference between Golden and Brundy. Neither one quite sure who that was intended for. Yeah, he expected Golden to go to the hoop. Golden had an avenue, nobody on him. Brundy had a man pinned behind him. Golden didn't move, and Rodney led him to the basket. Treppy with it, left wing. Left corner, beat Strickland to the baseline. Shovel pass inside. That'll be a jump ball. Yep. They tied up Greg Jones, and the alternate possession goes to Bradley. That three-pointer by Kevin Edwards, his first of the ball game. He's now 22 of 42, so he's shooting about 53% from three-point territory. Greg Jones, 6'5", 225 pounds against Brundy. Brundy's going to have to use his quickness to offset Jones' strength. Trippy, another three-pointer. Got it again. He's hit eight in the last two games now. Yeah, somebody's got to go pick him up. A lot of times you see a guy that big, you won't go out and pick him up. You don't think he can fire from there. Well, he's strictly a perimeter That's player. Right. He's sending him a message now. Come and get me. He's much like Andy Laux of the uh, small Blue Demons. Well, that was a terrible force by Strickland. And the foul in the back door, the blocking foul on Strickland, who got knocked down on the play. No time the ball fans didn't care much for that call. It's the first foul against either club, and it goes against Bob Strickland at the ball. Jeffrey Lyndon Bradley right on the play. That's the toughest call in basketball. And most of the time, it's awful tough to get it get away with that in open court. Usually, you'll get away with that and get the charge called when you're down on the baseline or in the lane in a lot of traffic. DePaul, 18-9 overall in the series against Bradley. They won the last 10 in a row. The last time Bradley won a ball game against DePaul was at Peoria in 1954. Manuel missed the 15-footer. And Hawkins takes the rebound away from T. Green. Cross court pass to Trippy, And he walked that time. A little jump step before he put the ball on the ground. Good use of the body and the arm by Hersey Hawkins. You saw him there screen Green away from the ball. He couldn't, he didn't beat T. Green to the ball, but got his body up there in front. He got the, got the rebound. Andy Laux replaces Rod Strickland. Andy, a 6'5", senior from Elmhurst, Illinois. One of the tri-captains with a 3.8 scoring average. I don't think you'll see Strickland out no. very long. Coach Joe Meyer just want to get a few words with him. Edwards drives the baseline. Double team. Yeah. Nice pass oh. inside to Brundy. Missed the shot there. Kevin Golden on the foul. And we got a foul call against the Bradley Braves. And all back may not like that call. It was a little late on the call. Let's take a look at it. Good move by Edwards around Hersey Hawkins' baseline. There's the... Bradley does such a great job of getting inside as you see Ernie give you that second shot. Brundy can really slither in on that baseline and get the angle up on the basket. He's not a power player. He uses his quickness. Guile. He hits the free throw. He's only shooting 41.5%. 
And that snapped a string of seven straight misses for him. Looks like Joey Meyer is going right at Hersey Hawkins offensively, making him play some defense and hopefully wearing him down so he won't score as many points or at least won't be as effective offensively. Lundy missed the second, 8-6 in favor of the call. Hawkins had the ball stripped away. No travel call as he came down with it. Trimpey guarded by T. Green, not Emmanuel. Anthony Manuel. Long jumper, got it. 18-footer ties the score at 8 all. Well, so far, Hawkins has not scored. That's our first tie at 8. Well, they're doing the best thing you can to an offensive player as great as Hawkins. They're still letting him have the ball. They're fronting him and getting a lot of help. So Edwards, not only playing well man-to-man, -man, but getting a lot of help. There's has seven games of 40 or more, six this year. Three-point try out of the left corner, a little bit long off the iron by Edwards, and the ball's battered up and picked up by Luke Jackson and Bradley. Here comes Manuel with it, and trailing on the play, Brundy knocks it loose, rolls out of bounds, touched last by Bradley, the ball basketball. Good hustle by Golden, may have been a break for the Demons. And we've got our first timeout with 15:41 left to go in the first half here at the Rosemont Horizon. We're all even, DePaul 8, Bradley 8. When you're trying to make a name for yourself, you sure have a lot of proving to do. You gotta prove you can perform, you gotta prove you're quick, you gotta prove you're maneuverable. And if you work hard enough and long enough, pretty soon people will notice. So what do you do when all this happens? Well, you don't slow down, that's for sure. Neil Anderson for the 1988 Honda Accord, the new crowd pleaser in town. Good friends like you are so very hard to find. Stand by me, you understand. Gonna share a Coca Cola with a friend of mine. This is the life. These are the real things. You're the heart of it. Yeah, every day, in every way. Coca Cola's a part of your life. Coca Cola's a part of your life. You can't beat the feeling. Recognition. It's not something you get every day, which is what made this morning so different for the youngs, whose car is usually parked right here. This morning, however, they're down at Allstate getting a special reward, a new discount of up to 15% off their car insurance for having Allstate home insurance and excellent driving records. Find out how your home can now help you save on your car. Ask for the Allstate Auto Advantage, a new reason. to shave a giant. Avoid big trouble. Use the Gillette Good News Plus Disposable. It's got the Lubra Smooth Strip. So the comfortable shave for a giant is this little guy. Good News Plus from Gillette. Rod Strickland checks back in for DePaul and Donald Powell, a 6'8 senior from Nowata, Oklahoma. A 10.7 scoring average and a starter all year. Somewhat of a surprise not starting tonight. He's in there now for Bradley. Along with uh, and Kevin Holland also in the lineup now for DePaul. Kevin, a 6'7 sophomore from Cerritos, California, averaging just under five points at 4.7 a game. Strickland. He's got to get some rebounds here tonight, and he has rebounded and very well of late. Grundy, left side to Edwards. We're tied at eight. Blue Demons, three of six. Holland gets the ball inside, missed a little five footer off the rim short, and travel called against Donald Powell, who stumbled and fell, getting the ball off the uh, Defensive board for Bradley, and so baseline right, it'll be Blue Demon basketball. Looked like he got rid of that one before he really went to the floor. I didn't like the call, but it also took away a, a hoop away from the Demons because the ball yeah. went right to them. They had a layup. Strickland working the right side. Holland pops out, gives to Edwards. Now to Laux on the left wing. Baseline. Rodney Strickland pull up 10 footer, had to alter the arc of that one. Tipped in beautifully off the glass by Brunty. Stanley with five early, and DePaul leads 10-8. Strickland's got to be awful careful. He doesn't try to force his offense. Edwards knocked that ball away out of bounds as he overplayed Hawkins in the right corner. Bradley, three of five, 60%. DePaul now, four of eight, 50-50 for the Blue Demons. Here's a look at Stan Albeck, successful coach at the NBA, and now coaching at his alma mater at Bradley. Trippy to Manuel. Low on the right side. Powell. Jack Nice wheels one up off the glass. Draws a foul. That's going against Holland. Foul number two against DePaul. There you see Donald Powell going a hoop and drawing a foul. You know, Bradley's trying to get Hersey Hawkins open by putting him down on the baseline and bringing him off one screen or two. 
he has his choice to go either way. One of the ploys a lot of times an offensive player will use is, you know, he doesn't want to stay in that paint area very long because that is a three-second area. So he'll step out of bounds and sometimes still stay in a three-second area. That should be a three-second call. That lane does extend clear out of bounds, and sometimes the referees will miss that and, and allow him to do that. On that particular play, they did. Percy had made his home in there. Hawkins had the ball knocked away out of bounds. It goes to Bradley as Powell, a 63 and a half percenter, missed the first two free throws of the game for Bradley. The Braves shooting a 706 from the stripe, about seven percentage points better than DePaul. The Blue Demons have struggled all year at the stripe. In fact, that was one of the main reasons they were 0 for 2 in ACC territory. Edwards got away with a reach there. Strickland back to Kevin Scoops and scores. And Bradley now trailing to Paul 12-8. The Blue Demons by 4. Well, Kevin Edwards is just a great athlete. He's got long arms. He can jump well, and he's quick. And Hersey Hawkins has got to get a hoop to get off the snide here. Bradley struggling from the field. And another overplay by Edwards. And knocked the ball away from Hawkins. Call right yep. there. Yeah, that's a make -up. That, that wasn't a foul. No. Very nice defensive job by Kevin Edwards. And a little sympathy call for the leading scorer in the country. Edwards' first foul, the third against DePaul. The previous foul, I think I said, was on uh, Holland. It went against Bundy instead. So Stanley with a foul. DePaul has a great advantage in that usually they play three guards, which will allow them to switch pretty freely off Percy Hawkins. They get it in low to him. Goes up with a shot in the paint. That ball is tipped above the rim. Offensive goal sending. The ball goes to DePaul. Yeah, and I thought that might have dropped if they let it go. 13.55 to go in the first half, and the leading scorer in the country right there has yet to score. T. Green back in. Edwards gets the breather now. Strickland beats the press across the timeline as Manuel stays right with him. Bounce for bounce. Laux. Out back it goes now to T. Green. DePaul with the ball in a four-point lead. Edwards with five, and Bundy with five. They have 10 of DePaul's 12 points. Powell hands it to Green. Working one-on-one -on, -one on Trippy Takes him into the paint. Pull up eight footer. Harshly blocked. Tipped off the glass by Bundy. And here comes the long rebound. Here's a four-on-one break for Bradley. Hawkins. Fumble the ball. Goes underneath too far to shoot. Somehow tries to get position. Hit the bottom of the rim. Powell gets it back and lays it in. Did you see Powell? 6'8", 230. And T. Green had great position on that rebound and just bounced off of him out of bounds. Lead had the ball by two now. Strickland left side around Holland's pick. Oh, he got hammered on that one. Ball spun in and out, no good. Tipped by Brundy in. He is all over the glass. He's got seven, two of them on tip in. He's going to be careful, though. No time to celebrate there. You better get back on defense. 14-10 to Paul. Seven points for Brundy. Three baskets, two on offensive tip ins off the glass. Nice fake dribble drive by Manuel underneath the Jackson. Nice move. Jackson scores. Good job by Manuel. He has been getting his teammates the shots. They just haven't been putting him down with consistency. And Rodney Strickland's going to have to stay on his feet, not jump every time Manuel fakes that shot. 14-12, Blue Demons. Louts out high on the right side. Swing it left side. T. Green out of the left corner. Good. Good half-court execution by Blue Demons. 16-12 to Paul. 12-10. Left to go in the first half here at the Rosemont Horizon on a... Wittry, snowy night in the Midwest. Nice fake and drive by Jackson. Left hands it off the glass and in. Right now, DePaul, even though they're playing Hersey Hawkins very well, man to man, are just leaning a little bit too much to help on him, the less allowing the other Bradley players to get the ball in good position for offensive play. Strickland right side out high to T. Green, up for a two point shot. Got it. He had a toe across the line. T. Green knocks it an 18 footer, and he's got six. DePaul and Bradley trading baskets. There's a three-point <laughs> shot by Hawkins. And Downtown. he brings Bradley within one. He's on the board with his 55th three-pointer of the year. That's three long-range jumpers for Bradley. Nice fake and dribble drive. Oh. And hanging on the rim, it won't go for T. Green. And here comes Bradley with a chance to regain the lead. Pull-up jumper from three. Off the heel of the rim by Manuel. Long rebound to Bradley to Strickland. Strickland takes it all the way to the hoop. Ball stripped away and touched last by Rod Strickland out of bounds to Bradley. Here comes Edwards and Golden back in now for the Blue Demons. And we've got an official timeout. 11-14 to go in the first half. We've got run and gun here at Rosemont, Illinois tonight. DePaul, 18, Bradley, 17. <laughs> Inside your mind, like an attic, a treasure of memories, 
and some questions about things like Social Security. If you become disabled, a worker dies, or you're ready to retire, a light should go on and remind you to contact Social Security. Remember, benefits are not automatic. You must apply for them. Contact Social Security. This bug's for all that you do. Papers say you busted it up pretty good. This is where we start. But that's something that won't let us quit. The clean, crisp taste of Beechwood aged Budweiser. To your first game back. This bug's for you. Here's an important financing announcement. Now, exclusively at Sondag's Castle Oldsmobile. 3.7 APR financing on every new and used car. Not just selected models, but 3.7 on every new and used vehicle in stock. Sondag's Castle Oldsmobile. A huge inventory means dramatic volume discounts, plus 3.7 APR on every car. Exclusively at Sondag's Castle Oldsmobile. In Morton Grove at 8833 North Waukegan Road, between Dempster and Golf. So far, the Blue Demons are shooting 50-50 on 8 of 16. They're 1 of 2 from three-point territory. Bradley, 7 of 11, 66% for the Braves, and they are 3 of 5 for 60% from three-point territory. But here's a surprising edge, 10-4. Bradley leading off the glass, but the Braves has turned it over seven times, only two turnovers for DePaul. I don't know if that's much a surprise. Bradley, a much bigger and stronger team than DePaul. As you can see, DePaul pick up in the diamond one. I think... Stan Albeck's got to be very happy that his team is this close without Hersey Hawkins. Press bothering him, but Manuel gets it across the timeline and then dribbles it out of bounds off his foot as he bumped into his teammate Luke Jackson at the 10-second line. Joey Meyer not very satisfied with the officiating he got at Georgia Tech from three Big Ten officials and was openly critical of him is on him again here tonight, thinking he's not getting those calls that he needs. Edwards open as he popped out at the 15-foot line, missed off the heel of the rim, long rebound goes to Golden, and DePaul reloads. Holland, left wing to Strickland. Edwards, to T. Green, double teamed, Golden open for the baseline, rebound Edwards up and in, nice play. Percy Hawkins leaning out for that fast break pass, didn't box out, and Edwards with a lay-in. Seven points for Kevin Edwards, seven for Brundy. 20 to 6, uh, 17, DePaul by three. Well, there's, an offense, there's an offensive foul right there. Trippy missed that three-point try. Rebound goes long, though, and traveling on uh, Donald Powell. He tried to muscle that one in for the right side. T. Green talking with London Bradley after well, that, went, that last call went uncalled. They're letting him play. <laughs> well, right now, Kevin Edwards working... Percy Hawkins a lot on offense, and it could be hurting. Oh, Hershey's nice spinning drive. Big shot off the glass. Baseline left by Strickland. Strickland off the snide now. He was struggling a little bit offensively, at least from a scoring perspective. Blue Demons up five. 22 to 17 at the 10-minute mark. And another turnover, the ninth of the first half for the Bradley Braves as they throw it away. Edwards on offense, off, offense moving a lot. He's working around. Constantly moving. That way Hawkins has to be moving, but Hawkins didn't move with him. Edwards slithers under and gets the rebound. And they keep working Hersey Hawkins again right now on the defensive end. And Edwards pops in a 15-foot follow-away jumper. He's got nine. And the ball now with three unanswered baskets. The Blue Demons lead by seven. 24-17. Hawkins double team right side. They swing it to Trippy, top of the circle. He has a pair of three-pointers early. Now they get it in low to Hawkins again. Bump. Blocked by Green. Ball knocked loose underneath. And a block by Holland and a foul on Kevin. I think they might have called that on Golden on that play. Holland on a good block over the top. Let's take a look it. at you it. You got it. Kevin Golden's first foul, the fourth, against DePaul. Holland on a nice block, but Golden gets him down low on the arm. And Joey Meyer constantly switching the defensive player on Hersey Hawkins. Now T. Green was on him for the last four or five transitions. Now with Laux back in, Edwards will probably switch back on him, thus allowing each player to get a little blow and making sure they stay out of real bad foul trouble. Yeah, Joey uses basically a seven, sometimes an eight-man rotation. He's going to use three or four different players on uh, Percy Hawkins tonight. 
Well, Powell is 0 for 3 at the stripe. He's the only Bradley Brave that's been there so far tonight. One thing you got to say about Hersey Hawkins, uh, averaging 35 points a game, he really hasn't forced anything tonight so far. That last shot may have been the closest thing, then it was blocked by T. Green. Powell finally knocks in his fourth free throw of the ball game. He's one for four. Zone press, full court. DePaul handles it. Locks out back to Edwards. That snapped a six-point DePaul run. DePaul leading by six, 24-18. Nine minutes to go in the first half. Right now, tripping on Edwards. There's a mismatch there. Up. Ball shot through the hands of the Blue Demons. Out of bounds to Bradley. The third turnover by DePaul. Bradley's turned it over nine times. Coach Stan Albeck trying to rev up the engine of his Bradley Braves. I think he feels they're playing too much half-court offense, not getting enough transition shots. Manuel right side to Hawkins. This time he's fronted by Golden Ball. Knocked out of bounds by Edwards, who helps out on the play. He's got to think Edwards is like his warm-up jacket and he hadn't taken it off yet. Kevin Edwards all over Hersey Hawkins. Hawkins unofficially one for four with a couple of shots partially blocked. The only basket he's made is from downtown, about 22 feet out, a three-pointer. We mentioned Bradley leading the nation. Division I schools with 149 three-pointers coming into this one. They've made three tonight. And their Another offensive foul yep. pushing off. Stanley Brundy on a good front there. Stanley using his quickness, and Donald Powell gets so frustrated he pushes off and gets called for the foul. Foul number one on Powell, and Bradley now showing some signs of frustration here. 8.41 to go in the first half. Talked about Bradley being the top three-pointing uh, three uh, ball club as far as the team is concerned. Alex Williams, the six-foot senior guard from Sacramento State University, is the top three-point shooter among individuals in Division I. He's had 11, three different times this year, 11 three-pointers in a single game. He's 11 short of his single-season uh, record. There's a shot blocked by Golden. Well, Golden was frustrated on that play. And I think he took a bad shot simply because of that oh, frustration. Foul on Edwards, and that could have gone the other way as Hawkins really leaned into him, but Edwards will draw his second foul. Well, there's a certain amount of respect given to the leading scorer in the nation and possibly a first-team All-American. Looked like Hersey leaned a little bit, drew the contact, and smart offensive players will do that, especially when they're in a the bonus so they can go to the free throw line. However, at this point, only the fourth team foul, 15 foul, excuse me, on the Blue Demons, so they'll take it out underneath the basket. Jerry Thomas has just checked in for Stan Albeck and the Bradley Braves, and he'll inbound the ball. 6'6", six, six senior. There's a shot out of the corner, missed by Hawkins again. Thomas from Collins High School. Bradley predominantly a Chicago-based ball club. Oh, T. Green wasn't ready for that pass from Kevin Holland. Here comes Manuel with it for Bradley. Well, he wanted to let that jump for Hawkins fumbles, gets the ball back on the left side. Emmanuel works by Brundy, dishes off out front, shot by Thomas. He threw a brick up off the glass there, ball knocked out of bounds. Oh, a break there for DePaul. Looked like T. Green might have touched that ball last. And we've got an official timeout, 7.45. Let's go in the first half. Pace has slowed down the scoring pace a little bit here. DePaul still leads by six. Hey, Paul, this is where we start. This bug's for all that you do. This is where we start. Papers say you busted it up pretty good. Too fancy for you, huh? <laughs> you got a long road back. You missed the cheese. Can you beat those doubts and fears? Ready? Not today. Don't you mean never? Well, that's something that won't let us quit. The clean, crisp taste of Beechwood aged Budweiser. <sighs> to your first game back. Thanks, buddy. This bug's for you. international passengers chose to fly with British Airways than with any other airline. In fact, last year, British Airways planes traveled over 150 million miles. That's further than from Earth to Mars and back. British Airways, the world's favorite airline. 
were talking about uh, Alex Williams. Sacramento State is 21 and 5 and ranks 17th in uh, Division II play. And he's averaging 5.8 three-pointers per game. And leads uh, all the NCAA divisions by more than one three-point shot made per game. And he needs 11 more in the last two games to top the national record of 158 for a year. Set by Fitzgerald of Butler University a year ago. Darren Fitzgerald. There's some viewers out in Sacramento watching tonight. Oh, good save. Oh, Strickland. Oh, fake to Holland in the corner. That way Holland's man didn't help defensively, and Rodney had the avenue to the basket. Four points for Lightning Rod Strickland. DePaul by eight again. 26-18. That's the biggest spread of the night. Another turnover. The 12th well, in the first half for the Bradley Braves. I'm Joe McConnell along with John Mengelt and our executive director, Arnie Harris. You're watching the best in college basketball on WGN Television Channel 9, Chicago. It's obvious that DePaul's defense is really frustrating the half-court offense of Bradley. They're not allowing the ball to Hersey Hawkins. I think that Bradley has to almost forcibly push the ball up the floor. And DePaul turns it over. Fifth turnover for the Blue Demons. Bradley's turned it over 12 times in the first half. T. Green fumbled that one out of bounds. Bradley very physical in the front court. It's the center and two forwards very pushing down low, and DePaul's going to have to get a little physical himself. Daniel jump pass inside. There was oh, a great walk. recovery. They're going to call a foul instead of the walk. If we can see that from the beginning, it'll be easy to show you what happened and what DePaul is doing. Holland jumps out. You don't quite see it there. Holland is really trying to help on Hersey Hawkins as Hawkins comes off the screen. Hawkins, Holland is showing. What I mean by that, he's jumping out on top of the screen just to give his defensive man a chance to slide through there. And that way, his big man slides to the hoop. That's Powell what happened there. Powell got inside. Powell's made two in a row after missing his first three. The Braves now have misfired four straight times from the floor to drop under 500 for the half with 7 of 15. DePaul 11 of 22. Blue Demon shooting 50%. 2 2 1 zone press, three quarter court for the Braves. Powell 3 of 6 from the line. 26 20. They better get it across quick. Lauchs beats the clock in the middle. T Green base. Oh. Five for the slam by Holland. He's fouled. He's undercut on the play by Powell, his second. Only the third team foul against Bradley. Superb execution by the Blue Demons. They broke the press, got the ball in the middle to T. Green, and he did exactly what Joey wants him to do. He attacked. It was a three-on-two situation. Holland misses the dunk, but he's at the line for two shots, and he's a 67% free throw shooter. Sophomore from Cerritos, California. Jump shoots it off the backside, no good. He missed one of two with three seconds to go down in Atlanta, and then... The Yellow Jackets came back and threw in a 25-footer at the horn to beat DePaul by one. He hits the second, the first point. DePaul a diamond and one zone press. You'd think that's exactly what Bradley wants. Two on one break. Thomas pull up jumper. In and out, won't go. Ball batted off the glass. Holland stays with it. On the pass, not to Edwards, who's checked back in the lineup for the Blue Demons. Who lead by seven. Nice pass baseline to Brunder. Reverse twisting drive and went to the left hand. Missed the shot, but drew the foul. Stanley's really got that adrenaline going when he's throwing up the left-handed sweeper. That's three fouls. Semi-fast break. Edwards pushes the ball up the floor, and what is this in Stanley's repertoire but a left-handed sweeper? I've never seen that one from him. I think he made one of those the other night. He's been going to his left hand a little more of late, and he's been very active off the boards. One for two at the line, and rims out on that one. With seven points early. You think that Paul would pay for a free throw consultant? <laughs> and what they might pay? Uh, Brundy, one for four. Stanley has made only one of his last 11. He's shooting uh, about 40% on the year. Hawkins, three-point shot from the left side. In and out, won't go. He's been held to a field goal here in the first half. Kevin Holland sweeps the glass for the Blue Demons. Now, one of the things that happens, Joe, is when you're a shooter and you're used to getting a lot of shots and you don't get them, you kind of get thrown out of sync. Laux, out front to Holland to T. Green. And there's a nice strip by Wilson. Knocked the ball out of bounds to the ball. Very nice defensive play. 
Paul Wilson, a 6'6 junior from Lorraine, Ohio, Catholic High School there. Here comes Strickland back in as Joey works that rotation, and uh, Andy Lopp sits down. The scoring pace has really fallen off here in the last four minutes of play. With 5.52 to go in the first half, the ball leading 27 to 20. Bradley has scored only three points since the 10 minutes. Well, so like most co both coaches talk a lot about the offensive play of each other's team, and both teams playing very aggressive, hand-checking, pushing kind of defense, and it's been a tough physical game. Strickland over the pick, chips and scores from the left side as Holland sets the pick, and Rodney bumps in the 15-footer. That was a tough 15-footer, too, in traffic with a bump or two. Six points now for Strickland. The ball by nine. Wilson working past Edwards, who fell down on the play, and good reaction by T. Green to deflect that ball out of bounds. T. He, with played, the, he played helper that time. Yeah, he tried to help the officials there. He doesn't have a whistle, no count. Good right. hustle by T. Green, who now is guarding Hawkins man for man as he and Edwards continue to switch. Pass over the top to Hawkins on the inbounds play. Underneath. A grab on T. Green before Wilson, or rather uh, Jerry Thomas, can get airborne to launch a try for a slam jam underneath. That's a foul on T. Green, his first. That's the seventh team foul on DePaul. Kevin Edwards, the only Blue Demon with two. So they've spread the fouls out very well here in the first half. They're going to want to do that between T. Green and Edwards and Andy Laux, who can come in and, and play Hawkins for a while, and even Rodney Strickland could play him. Uh, they're really overplaying him and not allowing him to get the ball. And Thomas only at 51 and a half percenter. He rattles that one in. An interesting stat. Hawkins averages 10 and a half free throw tries a game and shoots at over 87 percent. Bradley shooting under 60 percent as a team when you take Hawkins free throws away. It looks like Hawkins really doesn't drive to the basket that much and his free throws must come off of one on one moves once he gets the ball. He likes to get it down in the paint. He likes to come off screens and pop it, and most of his to the basket comes when he is uh, on a transition game. Strickland off the dribble, gives to Edwards, three-point try, not there. Long rebound to Hersey Hawkins. Manuel down court. Thomas lays it up and in, and Bradley now coming back. It's 29-24. Very nice executions. Hawkins to Manuel. Manuel got the lob pass out ahead, and DePaul did not get back defensively. Four points in a row now for Jerry Thomas. DePaul switched into a 2-3 zone. Strickland passes up the three-pointer, gives to Green. Which means that Stan Albeck has admitted that he may feel that DePaul's too quick offensively to cover. Three-point five by Rod Strickland, and he nails it. He's 12 of 24. He's 50-50 from three-point territory this year, and that gives him nine first-half points, and DePaul leads by eight. Good way to bring him out of his zone. Manuel out front. Here's to Hawkins. Got a bounce. Hawkins looking for a call. Didn't get it. Nice help by Kevin Holland. Is the defensive players for DePaul, the big men, continue this to give Hawkins a little bump as he comes off. Oh, from the weak side, Stanley Brunley with those quick hands. It's in there, knocks that one away. Good help, all around help by the Blue Demon big man. Hawkins had to chase an inbounds pass down near the 10 second line. He's double team. Ball not loose. He gets it back, partially blocked. This time they finally call a foul on the ball, and Joey Meyer is living. Well, he thought the, it was a clean block. That's because he hadn't felt like he's gotten a break yet from London Bradley so far here tonight, and I think he's not mad about the foul, but I think he thought Hawkins traveled before the play. Foul on Holland, Kevin's second foul. Let's take a look at it. Hawkins likes to get the ball in the paint area, really. Double team, triple team. Right there, he, Joey thought he traveled, and then a little nitpicky foul there by Holland. And uh, despite of whether they're nitpicky or not, when somebody's in the act of shooting, it'll really affect the shot. Well, they, they've affected Hawkins' rhythm here tonight. He misses his first free throw try. Made 165 out of the first 189. And he hits the second one, and we've got an official's timeout with 3.58 to play here in the first half. DePaul leading Bradley, 32-25. I drive an 18-wheeler, and I was due in Tacoma one Friday when I hit bad weather. You know, by the time I got there, the warehouse was closed for the weekend, and I was stuck there till Monday. So I called the special City Bank 800 number. He said his trip was going to take longer than expected, and he might need some extra cash. Where could he use a Citibank visa to get some? She gave me the address of a place nearby. It's not the first time that Citibank's helped me out on the road. Not just visa, Citibank visa. All you need to
you know about great selection and low prices is here, inside the newest circular from True Value Hardware Store. The Dollar Dazzler Circular offers over 100 items for one dollar or less, like Value Bright Light Bulb, Green Thumb Potting Soil, Scotch Brand Ceiling Paint, or True Test Paint Thinner, an Empire Stripping Brush, or Service Spray Enamel. For great prices and professional advice, shop at participating True Value Hardware Stores. And tell them Pat Summerall sent you. Good friends like you are so very hard to find. Stand by me, you understand. Gonna share a Coca-Cola with a friend of mine. This is the life. If I love your things, you're in the heart of it. Yeah, every day, in every way, Coca-Cola's a part of your life. Coca-Cola's a part of your life. You can't beat the feeling. 32-25, DePaul, with 3.58 left to go in the first half. Our next Channel 9 telecast of the Blue Demons will be this Saturday night when the Purple Aces of Evansville and the Midwest Collegiate Conference come calling. Evansville off to a quick start, although they've uh, struggled of late. But DePaul and Evansville at 7.30 right here on Channel 9, Saturday night. There's a big high school doubleheader before that game, isn't there? They I have that. big high school doubleheaders here. I think Argo plays Proviso East and... St. Rita plays Evanston right before that ball game. So it'll be all-day basketball here at the Horizon. If they can dig out by then. We're expecting another four or five inches of snow in the next 24 hours. Already got about six inches on the ground now. Nice pass inside. Golden fumble and he walked. Andy Laux continues, I think, to refuse to take his three-point shot. He was wide open on that play. Didn't launch it. Sixth turnover for DePaul. Bradley's turned it over 12 times. The Braves with a 15-10 edge off the boards. Bradley, 8 of 18, three-point try by Manuel. No good there, 3 of 9 from three-point territory. Hawkins with the rebound. One-on-one on, one on Lauchs, can't position himself for the shot, now drives the baseline, and passes off instead, and the layup oh, is Oh, Kevin Edwards. Great follow rebound by Edwards after the layup was missed. Strickland, pull-up jumper from 12. Got it, nice touch by Rod Strickland. He had to adjust that one, he's got 11. Don't celebrate, you gotta get back though. Here come the Braves. Another nine point lead for DePaul, and it's cut quickly to six as Manuel swishes in a three-pointer. His first three-point try tonight, and number 47 on the year. They're four of 10, and they've got no conscience when it comes to putting up the three-point shot. Lauch on the left wing, out front, out of Strickland. Back to Andy. Bradley continues the 2-3 zone, except for they altered a little bit to pick up uh, Strickland as he comes down the floor. Lauch kind of jerked that three-point try. His first shot of the ball game rimmed it off short. Daniel down quickly, out front. Long three-point shot, good by Paul Wilson. He was 14 of 43 before he put that one up. Well, that's what Bradley likes to do, transition game. Move it up and down the floor, get their shooters in position, and Manuel will get them the ball. So they've hit back-to-back -back three pointers, and that nine-point lead has been chopped suddenly to just three. First three points of the game for Paul Wilson. Lock to the right wing to Bundy. Cross court to Strickland. Three point try by Rodney Badland. Uh, and a foul on the outlet pass. Not a smart foul. Blue Demons with a dry stretch here. Oh, Kevin Edwards with his third foul, and that is a crucial call there. Oh, that was. He'll leave the ball game with nine first-half points. Well, what a first half he's played. Now you take a lot of the pizzazz out of him and a lot of his defensive ability when you put him with that third foul. He'll come out in the second half, really change with fouls, and he will not be able to play. Percy Hawkins is close. I probably think you'll see T. Green now. Yeah. And a missed rebound, and Hawkins gets the rebound, shot off the missed free throw. Now it's a one-point DePaul lead, an eight-point run for Bradley. And it's been since Stan Allback went back in that 2-3 zone. Rodney Strickland hit that three-pointer, and that was it. And T. Green comes back with a three-point shot of his own. His 13th three-pointer of the year, and he's got nine. T. Green with the hot hand, you need to get him the ball. Hawkins had it knocked loose, double dribble. Oh, I don't know. They, uh -uh. If T. Green hit that ball, that's not a travel. I wouldn't think so. <laughs> the referee's saying he never hit it, or if he hit it early and then Hawkins lost, lost it. it on the way up, that is a travel. So 
Tough call to make, and as everybody's arguing, T. Green. Uh, T. Green was wide open and then changed his mind, tried to drive for the hole, but walked before he put the ball on the floor. Two quick turnovers for DePaul now gives them seven in the first half. That's one of those things you couldn't you couldn't believe he was as open as he uh, was. 37-33, Blue Demons. 1.15 to go in the half. Hawkins firing quickly. Forced up a shot there. Nice rebound by Brundy. Out the pass to Strickland. Two on one. T. Green is back. Here comes a trailer. Highland. He scores! A little of their own medicine as the Demons run it down on the Braves. Six point to Paul, lead at 39 33 now. Less than a minute to play. Tough Three shot. point shot. Manuel missed it off the back of the rim. Long rebound. Locks tried to save it out of bounds to Bradley as Andy dove into the scorer's table. Great hustle by Andy Lauch. He, he's all right. He took a head first dive into the press table. 51 seconds to play in the half. Bradley basketball, the Braves trail, the Blue Demons by six. Manuel may be a little bit frustrated he can't get the ball to Hawkins. He's lost a couple satellites there. That last one, I didn't know if it was ever going to come down. It was from downtown. Braves have put up a bunch of three-point shots in the first half. I've got them unofficially five for 13. And DePaul, three and six. Wilson. A oh, little eagle screen. Offensive foul against Bradley. On, on Luke Jackson. That's his second. What they do is they set a down screen for Hersey Hawkins to come out off the pick in the key area. If he doesn't get the shot, they'll reverse the ball back out to the top and then set a back screen for him. Hawkins went through the screen and Jackson moved, picked off Green. Can't do that. That's a foul. 40 seconds to play, and DePaul could now work the clock down and take the last shot. They have a six-point lead. And they'll probably do that. Now, one of the things that you want to be careful is you're going to stand here and work it down. Don't take the shot too soon. You want to go at about the eight-second mark. And I'd probably want Rodney Strickland with the ball and just let him penetrate and make something happen. Overplay by Manuel. Holland. Obviously, Bradley almost trying to force him into it's almost too early right now. You want to take your time here. Eight a lot of time down. left. Strickland tried to force the ball inside. Knocked out of bounds. Six seconds to go. DePaul will reload baseline right with a six-point lead. 39-33. Six seconds to play here in the first half. Andy Lops will trigger in. Looking, looking. Has to hurry. Is it in along the baseline? Now we're going to call him out of bounds. Yep. Out of bounds by Nathan against the Blue Demons. You want to pressure him a little bit here. Don't let him have the ball and just walk it up the floor. I think you're making a mistake. Here comes Manuel. Almost lost it on the dribble. Wilson traveled. That's the and the horse down. That's the end of the first half. The end of the first half here at the Rosemont Horizon. In this battle between two powerhouses for the state of Illinois. For the first time since 1980, they're meeting on the basketball court. And DePaul leads at halftime over the 15th ranked Bradley Braves, 39-33. John Van Gelden, Joey Meyer, in just a moment. Clint Eastwood. It's none of the job too tough for you. Jeff Bridges. I don't know if I can pull this thing off. Wanted men who want money. A lot of it. You still interested in banks, kid? They're after one small fortune with one big gun. It's grand lunacy. It's Clint Eastwood in Thunderbolt and Lightfoot with limited interruptions. Thursday night at 7 on Channel 9. Hey, how you doing? Good. In fact, I feel like light. Hey. Mm. What the? Uh-oh. Oh, I am so... Oh, no. Well, I miss Bud Light. If you want the less filling light yeah. with the first name and taste, ask for Bud Light, because everything else... You all right? Sure, just a little lightheaded. It's just a light. Honda would like to show you something you've never seen before. Four-wheel steering. Steering from Honda, only on the new Prelude SI. It's an incredible turn of events. 
Westlake Community Hospital offers CPR classes on Monday, February 15th and 22nd from 7 to 9.30 p.m. Call 681-3000. Welcome to the Joey Meyer Halftime Show. I'm your host, John Mengel, and of course with me as always is the coach of the Blue Demons, Joey Meyer. In each game we try to talk a little bit about something about college basketball. And coach, I guess from my perspective, being a player and never having the opportunity to coach except from over here on the sidelines, which is probably the best place, how do you prepare your team maybe differently at this time of the year than you might normally at the beginning of the year? In other words, what's a week like of practice to prepare for a game like this? Well, first of all, we came back from the Tech game. We had three days to get ready for Bradley, so we gave them one day off where we just lifted weights and showed them film because I think now you've got to be concerned about their legs. You might overwork them. And so we gave them the one day off. To, we just shot free throws, believe it or not, and lifted weights. And then the next day we worked, and we tried to do a little bit more up and down work for Bradley because that's the way they play. But again, I don't want to do too much of that because I don't want to take it away from their legs for the game. And then yesterday on Tuesday, we had a light workout and just kind of reviewed everything. So I guess what I'm saying is you, you try not to do quite as much up and down work you do a little bit more film work and you try to make sure you find time for them to lift so they keep their strength through the season. Okay, I, that's the question I was going to have. I mean, back when you and I played basketball and we're not going to age ourselves, you know, lifting weights was taboo. I mean, you just didn't do that at all. Yeah, it's obvious by my build anyway. I don't know about yours, but... Uh, uh, I think during the season, I think uh, in the in the early 70s, it started becoming popular, but I don't think people really talk much about it during the season. It was kind of like you do those things off the season, but now everybody says you lose all the effect of it in the off season if you don't sustain something through the season. So we really try to at least lift two times a week, and normally we like to give them one day off a week from practice, and that one day we make sure we lift because we think they'll lift a little bit harder. You know, you, know, you said before that you, you don't try to go up and down the floor very much right now. Is that because of this time of the year uh, maybe the players come a little bit combative with each with each other and you know you want to really save that aggressiveness for the games no I don't think it's that I, th I think it's just you don't want to use it up in practice when you're playing every couple of days you're getting a lot up and down work and, and a kid like Kevin Edwards who works so hard I'm concerned he works that same hard in practice I'm gonna wear him out so I got to make sure I sub for those guys we still do up and down because conditioning is important we still do it but not quite as much as you do a two and a half hour practice earlier in the season where you cut that down to maybe an hour live practice and you try to get them to work real hard but not as long because I, I just worry about teams wearing out a little bit and as I say I worry about their strength leaving them too. Now as far as uh, scouting reports go uh, they weren't quite that sophisticated when I play. I mean, do you actually make out an entirely written scouting report for each player and go over that very intricately including what the players do and, and maybe the tendencies of the team or do you go over their plays? Well we go over everything. We, we'd give you one of those if we thought you could understand <laughs> it but I didn't think you could understand no. it but uh, we, we go through a pretty extensive thing where we give them their individual tendencies, we show them what their offensive plays are, and we talk a little bit about defensively. We we meet every day and show them a little film. We, we, we start with practice before practice, show them maybe five minutes of, of Bradley tape and show them some of their tendencies and talk about their player. I really think repetition is the key. You don't want to go long, but you want to repeat it continually. Then we go out in the floor and we'll walk through some things and show them how we want to defense, say, a Hershey Hawkins and what we're going to do on this screen or that screen. So, And if you do it a couple of days, I think it becomes memory because if they have to stop and think on the floor they're useless so we try to do it two or three times before we play the game and that way we think they'll react to the situation the way they've done it in practice each player has his own scouting report and, and a breakdown on the guys that you think he's going to play or everybody. Well, we get we make it a continuing one and we, and we go over it where they can look at it while the coach is talking. Some days, depending on how many days we have before a game, we'll give them one the night before and have them bring them to the meeting. So hopefully they'll, they'll spend the time to look at it. But we make sure we go over it. And I think film work has been something that's really helped us. Even film work on ourselves. I think you got to really spend time during the season on yourself. Sometimes you play so often, you're talking about Bradley, you forget about yourself. So you, you got to show tapes of yourself and show what you need to do to improve as a basketball team and that's one thing I've been pleased about this team maybe we haven't got quite as many wins as I'd like but I think this team's improving each game and we've really tried to stay with watching tape and correcting ourselves now what about the day of the game anything uh, we have a shoot around um, and we go through shooting obviously and then we do some walk through of what they're going to do and what we want to get accomplished and we have a meeting go over all the personnel again and show them a highlight tape and I try to summarize it so again it's one of those things where you keep repeating it and by the last time I give it they're usually going alright I got it I got it but I think they're ready to play them. Pound it in their head. What about your top five tonight? What do you, who do you got? It's been a wild week. Yeah, I was going to put uh, Bradley number one, <laughs> but I changed my mind there. I put Temple, Purdue, Arizona, Duke. I still like Duke. I think Duke's underrated. I think they're a heck of a team. And then I put Oklahoma in there because I couldn't think of a fifth one, and they score a lot of points. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to hang with Purdue as number one. And then after that, I have no idea. I got four question marks. 
And I heard somebody say at the beginning of the year that he would give anybody a choice of any five teams in the country and give anybody else the field, uh, take the field himself, and he'd win on who was going to win the NCAA. I think that's probably a pretty good idea because I know we'd be one of those other ones. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, Joy, for being honest, and we appreciate it every week. And Joe and I will be back with scores, highlights, and stats right after this. Halftime, DePaul leading by six, and I guess the only surprise might be the fact that they really put the clamps on Hersey Hawkins here at halftime. Well, they did. They did a very nice job helping off defensively. The big guys will come out and show, and it really affected, uh, I think, uh, Bradley's half-court offense. Well, the Bradley Braves, 11 of 25 overall. That's only 44%, while DePaul is 17 of 31, shooting 11% better at 55. 5 of 13 from three-point territory for the Division I leading three-point shooting ball club. Volume-wise, that is, the Bradley Braves with 149 three-pointers coming in tonight. Five out of 13 from that territory in the first half, while DePaul was much better, five of seven. Free throws, Bradley a slight edge. They've been there more often, six of 11 to just two of six for DePaul. And rebounding a big edge to the Braves, 20 to 12. But the turnovers, 15 for Bradley, eight for DePaul. Well, I think, the, as you see the scores there, and obviously you can read them, the, the big statistic, I believe, is the three fouls on Kevin Edwards. I think that's going to affect the way he plays Hersey Hawkins, and I think Hawkins will get off to a pretty quick start here Look in the that. second half. DePaul's backcourt outscoring Bradley's backcourt 20 to 11 in the first half when Bradley's backcourt of Manuel and Hawkins averaging 50 points a game to 40 points a game for Strickland and Edwards. I don't think Strickland really had a basket until about the 13 to 12 minute mark. He came on real strong in the second part I had of the second one, half. One basket in the first 10 minutes of play and the, the nine points in the second 10 minutes of play of the first half. Edwards out front to Strickland, inside pass to Holland, there starting the second half. Edwards wide open for the left oh. leg, and he nets it. You know, and, and you shot. maturity open. by Rodney Strickland, he, he, he designed that thing. He kept calling Holland up into the middle, knowing that the man would drop off, and Edwards would have the field goal. Give a lot of credit to that one to Rodney Strickland. Edwards, two of four from three-point territory. Hawkins fires from the right side, can't get it to fall. Rebound inside, though, for the Bradley Braves. Ball knocked loose, and out of bounds it goes to Bradley. Again, good recovery by DePaul, very active defensively. T. Green, who did such a great job on David Rivers at Notre Dame, has taken over the duties on Hawkins. Edwards saddled with three fouls, has to be very careful here not to draw his fourth. They only put two points on the board on Edwards' shot. I thought that was a three-point shot, John. I don't think it makes much difference what we think. Well, I, I thought they called it a three-point shot. Thomas hits for Bradley. Gary Thomas with six points. I'm not sure they call that a three-point shot. They only put two on the board. Bradley stays in that 2-3 zone. They come out and pick Strickland up as he bombs from way beyond the three-point That's point a three-point line, Jack. Rodney with uh, two or three of those already tonight. Hawkins has a little trouble keeping his feet. He got the ball right where he wanted at that time. He gives off the dribble, didn't take the shot. As a deep hook missed underneath by Greg Jones, who was a surprise. Oh, great outlet pass. Strickland. Oh, oh, oh. It oh, what a play. Great outlet from Holland, and Strickland does the rest. 16 Whoa. for Rod Strickland. Timeout, Stan Albeck, and the Bradley Braves. And Paul with the largest lead of the ball game. 46 35, Blue Demon. Joining the ranks of the great sandwiches of the world, we proudly present the Dunkin' Donuts Croissant Sandwich in nine varieties, from chicken salad to bacon and egg with cheese. They're made to order night and day and served warm on our freshly baked croissants. So try Dunkin' Donuts Croissant Sandwiches and be prepared for greatness. Now at Dunkin' Donuts, get a made-to-order egg and cheese croissant sandwich at a made-to-order price. 99 cents at participating shops through February 14th. Here's an important financing announcement. Now, exclusively at Sondag's Castle Oldsmobile. 3.7 APR financing on every new and used car. Not just selected models, but 3.7 on every new and used vehicle in stock. Sondag's Castle Oldsmobile. A huge inventory means dramatic volume discounts, plus 3.7 APR on every car. Exclusively at Sondag's Castle Oldsmobile. In Morton Grove at 8833 North Waukegan Road, between Dempster and Golf. Round of lights here? 
ask for Bud Light. The light beer with the first name and taste. Let me know when you're ready for another round. Because everything else is just the light. <laughs> Here's that last play, and Hollins, watch this outlet pass. Real quick, in traffic up the middle, and of course Strickland, a playground move Whoa. here, fakes the ball over to Brundy and lays it up. What a play left-handed by Rodney Strickland. DePaul three out of three at the start of the second half. Bradley one of three. Working one-on-one, -on -one, Manuel against Strickland. Can't clear for the shot. Ball backcourt is completely outplayed the Bradley backcourt tonight. Manuel baseline left. Has to wheel it out front to Thomas. 16-foot push shot off the rim to the left. Rebound. Holland out the pass. Here comes T. Green. DePaul on the move with an 11-point lead. Early in the second half of play. Edwards open for the right side. Passed up the shot that time. Strickland. Left side. Three-point try on the way. T. Green hit the three-pointer. Green with a hot hand. To the pair of three-pointers tonight. Four of six the first half. Bombs his first one, but a little over-aggressive on that one. Picks up his second foul, the first against DePaul in the second half. Blue Demons now with a 14-point lead at 49-35. I think the one thing that could really affect the Demons here is if they get themselves in foul trouble. We've got to be very careful. When you've got a lead like this, you want to continue to be aggressively aggressive defensively, but not over-aggressive. You want to make Bradley earn their points, not get them from the line. Three-point try, rounded out as Manuel missed. DePaul. Strickland sets it up. Holland. Holland wanted that 18-footer, and knew Joey would get Joey's wrath. Working for the shot, T. Green rolls it off short, missed the 8-footer. Over the back. The rebound. Foul on uh, Bradley. It's on Luke Jackson, I believe. That'll be his third. First team foul against the Braves in the second half. Stan Albeck can't believe it. You can. You're on the road, Stan. <laughs> you know how that is. DePaul trying to make it 11 victories in a row over the years against Bradley. These two teams haven't played since the 79-80 season. It's the 28th time they have played with the ball winning two out of the three, 18-9, to nine, the lead of the series. Bradley back into man-to-man, -man, so Edwards can take Hawkins one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, Brundy! Oh, Brundy! Brundy. Stanley with his third tip-in basket of the game. He's got nine, and the ball by 16. Stanley, 135. Stanley again using that quickness. Nice baseline drive, Hawkins, but no basket. No foul basket. before the shot. Edwards forces the shot. Good defense by Hersey Hawkins. There's Stanley Brundy, who was out in front on the side, came slithering into the baseline. You know, one of the great moves that a rebounder uses a lot is he'll go out of bounds almost and then come back and work his way back up underneath the basket. Stanley Brundy real good at doing that. Foul on Brundy, his second. Second team foul against uh, DePaul here in the second half. Hawkins still with just six points. Leading score at 35-3. Yeah. A, a mental error there by Rodney Strickland. You're in a zone defense. You got to shade over to Hawkins. You've been playing him man-to-man -man very successfully all night. You got to get out on him. 13 point to Paul. He's at 51-38. Oh, there's a foul. Yep, no foul. It's Paul, though. Strickland knocked off balance, but maintains the dribble. You know, that may, you know, that may seem like a petty foul, but it'll help in the bonus. Edwards loose for the jumper, way short, rebound, Brundy, changed hands, can't Brundy again. Yep, ball knocked down, was rejected, but the ball comes out of there, Strickland wheels it out, back to reload the offense. Behind the back dribble, behind the back dribble again, but can't clear for the shot. Nope. He green from three, first step Brundy, Brundy again. Brundy going after the loose ball, rebound, and foul. Oh, no. Going to be called against Brundy, his third. London Bradley and Joey Meyer going at it on the sidelines. Not a good place for Joey to get a technical when he has a 13-point lead. But, you know, you hate you hate as a, a fan and a coach to see aggressive play like that where really you could have gone either way. You can call a foul on either player. Joey, of course, thought it should have been on Bradley player, Powell, and... First stand all back and the officials knew it was on Terrence Green. Hawkins hit it off. Mr. Green hits him. Edwards with the rebound. Kevin centers it. Oh, a oh, great pass and a slam jam to the right side by Bundy. Good job by Kevin Edwards, the rebound and pushing it up the floor. And Brand Brundy, who can really get out, 
just beating the bigger Jackson and Powell down the floor. 53 38 to Paul by 15 inside pass. Good hook by Powell as Messi follows in his own missing Edwards gets the rebound, pushes it all the way down the floor. Of course, Brundy with his great quickness beats all the Bradley big people down the floor. 53 40 now. Man-to-man the man defense. They got Thomas, who's not quick enough. Oh, great feed as Edwards hung in the air. On Edwards. The weak side the foul call on. No way Thomas can stay up with Edwards, and they got him picking it up out at 25 feet, and Edwards with a little bitty screen broke loose and drew the foul. That's a fourth foul on Donald Powell. Only the second team foul on Bradley. Bundy, before that last miss, had made 16 consecutive field goal tries. Almost all of them inside 10 feet, a few of them on slams over about a four-game span. Now baseline right, Lops will be the trigger man for the Blue Demons. Charles Sowell, number 34, has checked in. 6'10", sophomore from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Hasn't played a whole lot this year. Was in Joey's doghouse earlier. Strickland, great penetration, changed hands, somehow got the shot. Holland. Followed by Holland. They kept it alive, they volleyed it across the rim, and then Holland followed it in with his second match. One of the things Joey had on the scouting report, he said, we must get that first rebound, must be very aggressive to the boards, and DePaul is doing just that tonight. Manuel gets the shooter's bounce there, he rolls in. He's good, at seven. Good soft touch, and he's going to shadow Strickland, not allowing him to have the ball, and Rodney, unlike he used to do, and go after the ball and try to bring around, just goes away. Edwards oh, all the way. The hoops scores with a right hand to that side. Nobody picked him up on the switch. Edwards with 13. The ball and Bradley exchanging baskets now. 15 point lead for the Blue Demons. Hersey with the check by Strickland. Hersey with a new look now. Andy Laux on him. Manuel to Hawkins on the right way. Manuel off balance. Looked like he got away with a walk. Blocked by Sowell. Now they, Sowell, weak side help. Spike that one out of bounds. Might have been Holland coming across. Sowell and Holland both there. Nice slithering move. The feed. Let's see it. Sowell up. Holland on the block. Sowell was behind Holland in front. Now Strickland goes out for a breather. Manual double team in the right wing. Out front to Hawkins. They swing it weak side on the left. Wilson can't get free for the shot, though, as DePaul adjusts very quickly. The Lanny over. Cross court almost threw it away, and Wilson traps it along his own baseline. Of course, DePaul in the zone. they got to watch Hawkins. Manuel from three. Got it. Well, he gets those feet lined up, that right one in front of the left one. He can fire. The second three-point shot of the game. Lout swings it left side to Edwards. 57-45 to Paul. Down to the right corner. T. Green inside to Sowell. And London Bradley said the ball was tipped away out of bounds. It'll stay at the DePaul end. Oh, and the Bradley bench can't believe it. They were, you know, any time a referee does that, he must be real convinced it happened that somebody checked it. Uh, he overruled the side official. That he had the call, he was baseline, so he was closer to the play where it originated today, right? Well, they're letting him play. Yeah, they are. And just as I say that, they get a hold. Paul Wilson, his first, third against Bradley in the second half. Too bad Terrence Green's not about 6'8", 6'9". He loves to post up down low, got a nice body to do it with, and can get good position. Sometimes he gets in there among the trees, though, and gets in trouble when he's going up. He's 6'8", or 6'9". He's got a future in the NBA. This way, he's got a future in the NFL. <laughs> He saved that inbounds pass along the baseline. I'd say there's a better than 50-50 chance he'll be drafted by one of the NFL teams after his eligibility is used up here basketball-wise at Paul, a great football player. Team muscles in, goes out front to Andy Laux. Cross court, oh, Edwards a great save. Spinning drive, baseline, he scores! Well, he's a great athlete, there's no doubt about that. 15 for Edwards, 14 point to Paul, lead at 59, 45, 12, 30 to go. Hawkins in the lane, Jack Nice up and in. Nice move by uh, what a play. Percy Hawkins taking a ball, coming off the screen. See, a lot of times DePaul's changing up. Sometimes they're coming out over to pick and keeping the ball from him. Other times they're trailing him. That time he trailed him and he took it to the basket. Took Hawkins almost 28 minutes to score 11 points. I don't know, but I've seen great scores like that get 28 in the next 10, too. So you've got to be real careful. Not let him get off. 
Ball by 12. Edwards left side to T. Green. Ball knocked loose. He retrieves it. A lot of guys that do a lot to get 12, 11, 12 points. So well. Bad pass there. Knocked loose. Picked up under the basket by Jackson after it was knocked away from Edwards. Manuel off the dribble. Long pass down court. And getting hammered on the drive of the hoop was Paul Wilson. And he was really hit hard. That was a gargantuan foul on that one, I'll tell you. Holland said, I'm going to make you earn him from the free throw line. Kevin Holland, there you see him in the top of your picture. Womp. Yeah, Sowell got a big piece of him as well. There it is. There's the big piece, though, on the arm. Sowell looked like at least he had a shot to block that one. Third foul of the game on uh, Kevin Holland. That the free throw strike will be Paul Wilson, the uh, 61 and a half this center. He has three points on a three quarter. Just his only free throw try, and he's up for two now as he wins that one in and out. The Braves did not shoot all that well from the free throw strike if Hawkins or Manuel were not there. And they do. Fortunately for Bradley, most of the free throw shooting. But that has not been the case tonight. Wilson knocks in the free throw. He's one of three. Give him four points. We've got an official's timeout. 11.39 left to go here at the Rosemont Horizon. DePaul 59. The Bradley Braves 48. Ford's done it again. Another big reason to buy from your local Ford dealer. Now up to $1,000 cash back, plus option package savings up to $2,000 more. And that's not on hard-to-sell models or something you don't want. Choose from America's number one cars and trucks. Ford Taurus, Thunderbird, Escort, Mustang, and the best-selling trucks. All with Ford's six-year, 60,000-mile warranty. Buy now for cash back up to $1,000, plus option package savings up to $2,000 more. Only from the quality people with quality products. <laughs> For three years, Bill Oakley took orders. But tonight, he's got to stand up and take charge. You make America work. Here's to you, the clean, crisp taste of Beechwood-aged Budweiser. For all the guys who know it's not what you say, but what you do. Joe McConnell along with John Mengelt and our executive di producer director Arnie Harris and you're watching the best in college basketball on WGN television channel 9 in Chicago and don't forget the news follows our telecast of this DePaul Bradley game tonight don't forget Jake Finley up there in the box he's got the all-state people up there and they had a big party for the Honda dealers Honda. before the game somehow they braved all the elements oh, yeah. and got here tonight Honda gives that car away for uh, something a shootout celebrity shootout or whatever you ought to get in on that <laughs> you'd have a much better shot at winning that than I would there's a foul away from the ball holding call against Bradley it's either on Manuel or uh, Powell it's on Powell it would be his fifth it's on Manuel instead that's his first fourth team foul against the Bradley Braves the second half DePaul might have 17 in the second half the Blue Demon still shooting about 54 percent for the ball game Bradley 6 of 13, 46 percent. They're about 45 percent on the night. 10-4 edge for DePaul after they were out-rebounded 20 to 12 by the Bradley Braves in the first half. So the rebounding now is much closer than it was. 24-20 in the ball game in favor of Bradley. A lot of DePaul's one for DePaul in the second half. A lot of DePaul's rebounds coming on the offensive end. That man right there, Holland. Well, he oh, he was fouled. Alcohol. Another offensive rebound. Stanley Brundy, nice job of posting up. Didn't quite finish it off, and you'll see him double-team Stanley Brundy right there. That gives Holland the avenue to get the rebound. Nobody to box him out, and there's the foul. Kevin Holland will shoot two from the free throw line. Good post up by Brundy here. He just didn't finish it off. As you saw, Jackson come across from the weak side to help, but when he came across, he left Holland open for the rebound. Second foul on Wilson, the fifth against... Uh, Bradley in the second half. Kevin Holland that's his second free throw and three tries. He has six. His average of 4.7. It's going to be a he's got some, part of next year's ball. He's got club. some great athletic talent. And Joey, 
would like to see Kevin Holland get him about 10 to 11 rebounds a ball game, and he'd be satisfied if he never scored. Well, he and Bundy are going to be the big men off the glass next year. 60 to 48. The ball leading with 11.02 to go, and a foul call against the Blue Demons. It looks like now Bradley's going a little bit up to the low post offense. They're trying to post up their big hosses, Powell and Jones. That's the fourth foul on Holland. He's going to have to be careful. Fourth team foul against uh, DePaul in the second half. Hawkins dishes off the man with a big one try. Tipped in, spiked in beautifully by Greg Jones. Well, they give it to Wilson. Paul Wilson, he and Jones are both up for it. Oh, that was a dandy. 60 to 50. I think DePaul needs a hoop here, needs a basket. Haven't really got much from the field of late. Louts tries for three. The second miss, long rebound to Manuel. Here comes off to the races. On the run. Uh, Wilson underneath on the feed from Manuel. Lays it in. He's might two quick hoops. Might be a good time for a timeout. Well, the lead has been whittled down now from 16 to 8. Of course, you don't like to use timeouts when you got the TV going to bring them to you. And we got another foul away from the ball. And this is going to be against T. Green. The Demons. That'll be three against T and five against the ball in the second half. And now Joey Watson gets a timeout. Going to call a timeout with 10 17 to go in the ball game. His lead has been chopped in half, 60 to 52 to fall by eight. We love our children at all ages, from all places. Unfortunately, some kids aren't loved. Kids like these, they're abused, they're battered, they're driven into the streets. Some become prostitutes, drug addicts, alcoholics. And today, kids like these are statistics because today they're dead. Covenant House helps with food, clothing, sanctuary, and most of all, someone to talk to. Call our nine line, 1-800-999-9999. It's no picnic, getting out there before the sun, when it's too cold to touch your hand to metal. But there's always a chance you could be just a little better than you were the day before. So you keep at it. Blue Cross and Blue Shield protects the U.S. Olympic team, as well as people right here in Illinois, with service and rates that never stop trying to be perfect. Do you have Blue Cross? Do $60 a night motel chains offer you that you can't get at Red Roof Inns? Well, let's add them up and see. This handy shower cap, 59 cents. Shampooette, $2. Ah, dental floss, always a plus. And, ooh, we're still spending $27 a night more than at Red Roof Inns. <laughs> Wait a minute, I forgot the mint. Don't pay too much for a room. Next time, hit the roof. Red Roof Inns. It's a good mint. It's not worth $27, but it's good. Stay tuned following tonight's game for the news with Rick Rosenthal and Pat Harvey. 10-17 to go. Big time for DePaul to D up. It's a very critical time as Bradley's making their oh, second what? half run. Daniel changes center foot, not foot. Key mistake there. Can't do that, can you? Ooh. Stan Albeck can't believe it. I'm sure he told his players too it was a critical time as Manuel, Anthony Manuel and Rodney Strickland continue to jaw each other. Manuel trying to shake up Strickland as he's really in his rhythm. Lob! Oh! Alley -oop. Edwards couldn't get it to roll. Brandy Fowles misses. Tipped by Golden right there. Something. The lid is on the basket now for DePaul as they missed a couple of shots right at the rim. Good follow. Hawkins fires the three. Short off the front and Brandy with a rebound. Well, DePaul dominating the boards here in the second half, and they've evened up the rebound to 27-26 now of the game. In and out, rebound, Brundy stepped as he goes up and goes out of bounds. Now, well, Joey wanted to foul. He's up <laughs> screaming as Brundy continues to use his quickness on the boards. Well, Brundy having a big second oh. half off the glass. As is Kevin Hollis. There's this inbound pass, a foul underneath. That's on Powell. He's gone. Rodney Strickland so quick. Just merely lined up at the free throw line and just beat Manuel one on one to the basket. Call it foul on Greg Jones. His first 16 foul on uh, Bradley. And the two shot 
foul coming now for Rod Strickland. He shoots 65 percent from the strike. You'd like to have your point guard shoot about 10 percent more than that. And Rod Strickland is free throw. 20 percent. Oh, you, you're on perfection, I know. Well, 85 is not perfection, and the guy's got the ball at the end of the game like he does. As Brunny gets away with a little push here. Rebound. Nine point to Paul Lee. Still at one or two from the strike now. Edwards works to the left side, shoots over the golden stick. Throws it out off the glass. Double rebound, Brunny! Oh, what an awesome game off the offensive rebound. The second half, Brunny. That's right. The second half. They call it chairman of the board. 13 for Brunny. Almost all of his points have come on offensive rebound. Daniel dishes off and a foul call on the drive. Daniel does a nice job. He's a husky 185. He's got a quick first step. Right, he's got a real quick first step and he uses his body well here in the paint. Good body control. Does an excellent job of finding the open man. Let's look at that quick first step. Boom, he beats Strickland. Strickland got to get down a little bit more. And I think that Greg Jones should have had a dunk on that one. He should have been there. They call out a shooting foul. The 16th foul from the goalie. How could they possibly? I don't know. He was. He, he, he dished that ball off. How could you? Well, they've got 17 fouls there on the ball, so it must have been the bonus. That was not a shooting foul. I guarantee you. In the NBA, they might have given it to you. They might have said he thought about shooting. Yeah. And only passed as the foul cap. Yeah. Right? yeah. 63-54 to Paul by nine. A little timid there by Green, didn't attack it when they beat the press. Sure, and they want him to use just a little bit of time. It's a little early to do that with 8.46 to go. Left side, Edwards. All the questions tried to go inside the building. Picked up by Powell. Here comes Bradley on the road. Long pass to the to Hawkins. Yes, that's all right. Nice pass and nice body control by Hawkins using his left hand. He has 13, and it's a seven-point lead now as Bradley starts to close in. 8.20 to go. Brundy in the fourth court out back to Edwards. Now, Brundy had a two-on-one and passed it up, so. Now, Brundy really can't handle the ball all that well out of the wick, so that might not have been a bad move. He likes Stanley inside five feet. Now, DePaul slowed their pace down just a little bit here, and I think it's affected the score. They're going to lead by seven now. Edwards. And a short hop off the knee. It's trickling out of bounds. The turnover gives it back to Bradley. The I think I, turnover. I think DePaul tends to lose their concentration when they get in that half-court game. And Edwards with uh, two bad passes in a row. One got deflected. The other off Strickland, the short hop off his knee. And I think they need to push the ball up the floor and get some of those pass breaks. And, and not only that, but transition shots. Bradley, down by seven. Manual out Wings it to Hawkins. Oh, quick release blocked by T. Green. Picked up by Bundy. Two on two break. Edwards takes it to the hoop. Scoops and scores. Nice play by T. Green. They have blocked about five shots attempted by Hawkins tonight. Well, Joey talked about at halftime how he's watched films and had the kids watch him. And Hawkins goes up real quick with his shot without many fakes. That's Wilson a bad shot. Three. Oh. Oh, they lost the rebound underneath. Another rejection to the point. And family call. Oh, my. Dan Albeck going crazy on the Bradley bench on that call. Well, that's a tough call. That could be a momentum breaker there. 17 turnovers now for the Braves. Hawkins with seven rebounds in the first half and two or three more here tonight. In the second half, he's got about 10 rebounds already. Gets called for a travel. Well, they've been rejecting him all night, though. He's had a tough time getting rid of his, rid of his shot. He Green maneuvers for the shot. In and out, one goal. Tipped by Bundy, but not... Not good enough, and finally yanked out of there by Donald Powell. Here comes Bradley again. Nice change of pace dribbled by Manuel, but he can't clear for the shot and swings it out back. You notice how Manuel, even though he doesn't get the fast break, he still looks for the penetration on the half-court defense before they're set up. I think that's what DePaul ought to do more of. Give Rodney Strickland the time to maneuver. Oh, nice nice play. move by Hawkins. Give and go. Oldest playing basketball. Got a little peekaboo screen there from Jones. 15 for Hersey, and now another seven point to Paul Lee. His lobster sent the check back into the moon Eagles at 65 58 with 6.25 to go. And we got a hook to Bundy. And we got a whistle away from the ball, a hole on Manuel. Oh, it's second. 14 in the lead now. Seven feet down against Bradley. Bradley personal number 12. That'll change a 
complexion of the game just a little bit. I'd almost demon. rather see DePaul take the ball out of bounds. The way they shoot free throws, guys. The way Rodney shoots them anyway of late. Although he's improved it this year, and I think in the second half of the season he's improved a lot. His follow throughs a lot better, and he's got a lot better rhythm. One for two, but he missed a clutch. Front end of a one-on-one -on -one in the late going at Georgia Tech. He hits that one. Give him 18. Two out of three from the stripe. 66-58 DePaul. 6.20 to go. Trying to knock off the top 20 team here tonight. 15 three in Bradley. Strickland gets two free throws there. Rodney three of four and 19 points to lead both ball clubs. Manuel to Hawkins. They're looking for Hersey all the way now. Scoops and scores on the drive. And a foul on the play. Hawkins moving much better towards the basket now, scoring a variety of layups. Well, they were coming off the top of the screen and denying Hawkins the ball in the first half and early in the second half. Now they're following him close. There you see Edwards behind him. He's chasing him around the screen instead of coming over the top as they're stepping up, and that's allowing Hawkins into the middle. And Joey gets the timeout on the fourth foul against Stanley Brundy. The score, DePaul 67, Bradley 60. And you can bet it's right when you get through And there's a beer that always fits right in your hand Cause you're a bud, bud, bud man And this bud's for you Oh, you do This bud's for you When you're trying to make a name for yourself You sure have a lot of proving to do you gotta prove you can perform, you gotta prove you're quick, you gotta prove you're maneuverable. And if you work hard enough and long enough, pretty soon people will notice. So what do you do when all this happens? Well, you don't slow down, that's for sure. Neil Anderson for the 1988 Honda Accord, the new crowd pleaser in town. Are you ready for a change of scenery that's well within your budget? Then take a trip to your local True Value hardware store during President's Day Paint Value. Beautify the interior of your home with True Test Easy Care Latex Paint. Its three spatter-resistant formulas make painting neater, and they come in beautiful decorator colors. Choose flat, semi-gloss, or flat enamel finishes. True Test Easy Care starts at just $9.98 a gallon during President's Day Paint Value at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. Hawkins trying to knock in a free throw here to complete the three-point play. Shoots almost 11 free throws a game. This is only his third try tonight, and he is just oh. on the three. And they blow a layup, and DePaul did not react to the rebound. Well, Brent Brun Jones missed the layup. Brundy with four fouls is going to play a little tentative, I'm sure, and Jones just snuck right around him, and of course Stanley couldn't do anything then, and he's going to break. I think you're going to see Stanley's effectiveness on the boards cut, or else he'll foul out. Oh, that's right. 5.50 to go, DePaul working the clock with a seven-point lead. Oh, what a big miss. Yeah, that could have been a combination four-point play with the rebound basket. Strickland on the left wing, guarded by Manuel. Oh, to Edwards, who pops out top of the key, ducks inside, Hershey Hawkins. Oh, it's not great back to Strickland, Rocky Jackknife, gets baseline, throws it behind, Edwards out of bounds. Good defensive play by Hershey Hawkins to break up an Edwards shot, and DePaul continues to struggle in that half-court offense. DePaul with a 19 to 10 edge off the boards here in the second half after they were out rebounded 20 to 12 in the first half. I think you're going to see that cut a little bit here though because of Brundy's foul trouble. He just cannot position himself. He cannot gamble on that fifth foul. So therefore he won't be able to position himself as well. Greg Jones gets the ball in the right wing, hands it back to Manuel. Last three field goals on the Bradley end have gone to Hersey Hawkins. Ball knocked out of bounds, and it stays at the Bradley end with 5-10 to go. The ball leading by seven. Brundy on a reach there, went after the ball. That's the one way you don't want to get your last foul. If you're going to be Stanley Brundy, you want to get it on a block or positioning yourself for a rebound, not a cheap one. Hawkins gives that foot to Manuel. They swing it weak side. Wilson misses a three-pointer. Rebound Hawkins all alone. Okay, there's Brundy right there. Hawkins probably easily in double digits on the rebound, and Brundy just couldn't do anything about it. He's got 19, and he's gotten the last four Bradley field goals all inside five feet. A couple of laps and a couple of rebounds got. Now it's a five-point lead. Edwards fires. Bad shot. Oh, yeah. He should have taken it coming off the screen. DePaul tentative. DePaul needs a basket the worst way. Here comes Daniel. This is off. Jones 
struggles at the line. He shoots 59%. And he'll be up there with a big one-on-one -on -one here to Paul in desperate need of his score as their 16-point lead has been chopped to three. You have to admit, Hershey Hawkins has been very patient. He's not forced shots up as most big-time scorers would do. And because of that, he's allowed his Braves to play themselves back into the ballgame. There was Stanley Brundy right there, but missed, couldn't maneuver in. Yeah, missed free throws continue to plague the Blue Demon. Bradley could tie if they hit a three-pointer here. Hawkins working baseline. Manuel from three. We tie. Three three-pointers for Manuel, and Bradley has scored nine in a row. That's the third timeout called by Joey Meyer. He only has one left. 3.53 to go, and DePaul's 16-point lead is finished. We're all tied. 67-67. Oh, boy. Well, you hear these fans, and there are a lot of them from Peoria. And as you read in the papers, uh, 10,000 Bradley alumni here. So this is not an away game for them. They've got a backing here, and it's uh, going to be a barn burner. DePaul, I think, really hurt themselves by getting the lead and really not aggressively trying to push them all up the floor anymore. Not only... Well, it all happened after the fourth foul on Grundy. Suddenly, they all got very tentative and tried to spread it out and slow it down. Well, it, it, it just... You know, you don't have to have fast breaks, but one of the things you can do is while you're transitioning and the defense is trying to try to find their positioning, so we're straight they're going to try to push the ball up the floor, especially when they've got as good as the Let's go try to listen shot. and see what Joey said. Let him run the floor. We gotta fight him defensively now. Let's show some poise and some confidence, boss. This is our ball. Together, let's go. Three, one, two, three, two, three together. The poise has been a problem for the Blue Demons in the close games going down to the wire. A tough five-point loss at Raleigh, North Carolina, and the, in a, just a devastating one-point loss in the final second of play. At Georgia Tech, and now Bradley is battled back from 16 down to tie. We've still got all day to go. This is 353 left. And Joey's used up three of his four. A lot of timeouts. As far as our scorecard is concerned, uh, Ben Hobbeck's got all four of his left. Yeah, and, I, and, and what's happened here is that I think the Paul's backcourt has lost their aggressiveness. Uh, Edwards coming off picks open, hesitates, and then waits and throws up a tougher shot. Strickland not penetrating, and uh, you know they need to pick it up. That's where it's at. We haven't been tied since early in the ball game at 8. Now we're tied at 67. Strickland in the lane, 12 footers. Strickland with a height advantage over Manuel. They should post up a little bit more. He's got three or four inches on him. 21 for Rodney. Percy Hawkins, three-pointer will go. Rebound, Edwards. Big rebound for the ball. Push it up. Strickland, blind pass down the right side. Great pass, T. Green. And a rebound up and in by Pundy. The ball back by four. No time to celebrate. Bradley will push it up very quickly and try to get a shot. What a great down court blind pass by Strickland to T. Green. Even though he missed the shot, Bundy was there with a follow. Hawkins wheels inside. And we got a hold on Terrence Green, his four. Hawkins will be at the line to shoot the one in bonus. And he's missed two out of three tonight. Most unlike like him because he is shooting better than 87% of the stripe on the year. Well, you earn superstar status and you earn it over a four-year period. That was a tough call on T. Green right there, you see him. Hawkins goes in, if there's any foul, it's on Brundy for reaching. And they called he traveled before he was grabbed. <laughs> well, at any rate, he's shooting the one on bonus. Got it. Well, Hawkins, two for four at the strike. And uh, he has a total of 20 points, and it's been a tough 24. Around and out, he's missed three free throws out of five tries. And Brundy with a rebound to Paul by three. Three minutes to go. Collin. Not back to Strickland. Bradley with a 2-2-1 zone press. Drops back into a man-to-man. -man. 
to try to get Strickland the ball in the middle again. There it's Green to Rod Strickland. Green comes out high. Nice pass inside. Good to the left. Great play by it. T3. Uh, good penetration, aggressiveness, and Stan Allback. Allback calls his first time out. And the Blue Demons, who were tied a moment ago, rallied back to lead by five. At 2.48 to go, it's now 73 68. The ball leading by five. Well, the pendulum swings. The scoreboard has two timeouts remaining, only for Bradley. One for DePaul. Of course, Joey will definitely want to save his until the end of the ball game. And as DePaul picks up their momentum and pushes the ball up the floor and, and attacks the basket aggressively, as you see T. Green here attacking the basket. and. Stanley Brundy, as he does so well, finding the open crevice and a good pass from Green, and he puts the ball up in the basket. But the Paul wants to run, and they have to run in order to be effective offensively. And 17 for Brundy now. Stanley goes to the left hand inside. Sometimes often overlooked with the great play of Strickland and Edwards is the uh, passing ability of T. Green, who came in tonight with 59 assists, the ranked third behind the two great guards on the Paul roster, and he came up with a great assist there. Well, Stan Allback now is going to figure out a way to get the ball to his star. And as we mentioned, Percy Hawkins has earned his superstar status. And I don't care what you play. As many games I've played, I know that that superstar is going to get the break down at the end of the ball game and going to get that foul that maybe he shouldn't. And so that's the guy they're going to try to get the basketball to here under pressure. And you got to give the Blue Demons credit. It could have been uh, very easy to will after losing that 16-point lead as Bradley came back to tie it at 67. But the ball came right back, got back-to-back -back baskets, and now lead by five with 2.28 to go. And they ended up with a pretty good crowd in here after yeah, they started did. out real slow. This probably would have been an easy sellout, probably about a thousand empty seats here and now they had over 15,000 sold in advance now Trevor Trippi comes back in he hit the first two three-point shots of the night for Bradley and has not played in the second half he disappeared and really didn't play much at all and we thought after those first two bombers he was going to be real effective 15,610 here tonight that's our attendance 15,610 the largest crowd of the year very carefully got a Brundy Cannot pick up his last foul. Double screen there for Hawkins. Oh, quick release. Can't get it. And Edwards with the baseline rebound. Might have pushed off a little bit to get the position for it. And he threw it away as he tried to dish it over wow. his shoulder to Strickland, and Strickland took his eye off the ball. Kevin got double teamed down there, and what happened was is T. Green was too close to him. T. should have cleared out. Would have allowed a little bit more room to throw it. And you're right, Joe. That's a big turnover. Trippy baseline left inbounding for Bradley. Wilson has the ball. Oh, there was a slap by Wilson. And Powell missed the shot. Underneath, T. Green rips it off the glass for the Blue Demons. Boy, they letting him play. And Hawkins with a foul in the backcourt. Stripped the ball off T. Green on the dribble drive. Foul number two against Hawkins. And uh, that means that T. Green now will go to the line to shoot a key one-on-one -on -one here. Well, you got to appreciate the way Hawkins keeps his cool. Non-emotional. Very steady player. Does a lot of good things. He's double digits rebounds easy tonight. Big free throw. He had missed his first one. He's one for two now. T. Green, T. Green went over to say something to Anthony Manuel, who badgers him at the free throw line as he's ready to shoot. He hit a pair. 14 points for Terrence Green. Seven point to Paul lead. Oh, there's plenty of time left over that three point play. They've outscored Bradley here, eight to one. Long shot. Tripper. Where is this guy? Why didn't he play? This guy know, comes, every shot he takes goes in for he had three points. Six three pointers at St. Louis. He had said three here. Nice dish off to Strickland. Put up Tripper. He hits the five footer. Watch Strickland with a total of 22. And to Paul with a six point lead. And there's a reach on Edwards, his fourth. First foul, though, on Kevin in the second half. Kevin, Which is kind of amazing, really. <laughs> Kevin behind Hawkins on the play. Joey telling him he's not smart. Didn't want him really to pick up that fourth foul again. That'll take some of the aggressiveness out of him. Six point to Paul Lee. Very important this time in the ball game. Hawkins 
I can't believe it. He has missed four out of six free throws. There's a foul there he got away with. Well, I guess. Now they call it. Well, Hawkins, who had missed only 24 free throws in 189 attempts, shooting 873 from the line on the year, has missed four out of six here tonight. Boy, you can tell Joey really wants this one badly after the loss of Georgia Tech. Yeah. He saw his lead slide away tonight and doesn't want it to happen again. I think what happens right now is when, when DePaul gets a rebound, too many DePaul players are hanging around after they clear the ball out, which allows them to double team and triple team the ball handler a lot more easily, and they need to clear out and kind of circle back in case their men don't with, get, go with them so they can get the ball back. Now Strickland hits two clutch free throws there. Rodney five and six tonight. Give him 25, and the call by eight. Down quickly, Manuel on the drive, scores for Bradley. Strickland's got to play a little bit better defense, a little bump and run. As for some reason, I think uh, Bradley, called Bradley a called the timeout. I, I thought you had to have the ball out of bounds or in your possession. But. No, you can, after a basket you can score, but I. I like the Bradley. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know you could call timeout after the uh, offensive player. Right. This being the Paul had the ball running back and forth out of bounds, so maybe they felt that Stan Allback called it before the man was handing the ball out of bounds. So now Stanley has called his third timeout. Each coach with one left. 124 remaining. 79-73 to Paul. 25 for Strickland. 17 for Edwards. So the backcourt for the Blue Demons total 42 tonight. And for Bradley, Hawkins has a total of 20 points. And uh, Manuel, a total of 17. So 37 points for the Bradley backcourt. One of the things you want to do if you're DePaul defensively is you want to at least try to make one Bradley use a little bit of time as they're coming up the floor. Time is in your favor now for the six-point lead. You want to kind of make them use time. And then you probably want to get the ball out of Manuel's hands, almost double teaming, pick him up, let him get the ball to somebody else who doesn't really handle it as well, and get it to somebody else, because right now he's doing all the creation out there. He's getting the ball to Hawkins, getting the ball to Big Guy, or taking the ball to the basket. So I'd like to try to see DePaul get the ball out of his hands, and of course the same goes the other way. Uh, Bradley should try to get it out of Roddy Strickland's hands because he's the man that can control it and run time off the clock for the Blue Demons. A reminder, our next Blue Demon telecast Saturday night at 7.30. DePaul hosting the Evansville Purple Aces right here at the Rosemont Horizon. Of course, now this is just now like Holland. a basket has occurred, yeah. so Andy Laux can run up and down the floor. Laux is in there and Holland's in there, and they both shoot free throws pretty well. Inbound play, and Trippy immediately reaches out and goes. You know, I'll tell you what, I, you know, this is the last time I'm going to say it tonight. <laughs> They've got to change that rule. That was an aggressive intentional foul, although he did go for the basketball, and you're going to see a foul upon here now because Stan Albeck knows the Demons are weak at the free throw line, and he's going to put them on the line and say, you got to beat me from there, guys. Well, the offensive great. team should have the opportunity, I believe, to take the ball out of bounds on the side in the last two minutes when there's a foul. You hardly argue that, Roger. Oh, he badly missed that. Bradley down by six, tripping, backs out of three-point range, can't get rid of the shot though. Manuel forces one up for the left corner. Oh, Hawkins on a oh, tip in. Beautiful tip in by Hersey Hawkins. He's got 22. He just hugged in the air. See, there they go again. Hacking and slashing in the backcourt. Foul on Manuel, his third. So now with 107 to go, we got a full point to Paul lead and Strickland, who is five of six at the strike. Yeah, you talk about ruin a beautiful game. Oh, that's what's going to happen here. Seventy-nine, seventy-five. Strickland with twenty-five, shooting the one and bonus. He got it. Rodney usually shoots free throws better under pressure than he does early in the ball game. Yeah. Probably because of concentration. Oh, a pair. He's seven of eight. 27 for Strickland. He's only three short of his single game high, his career high, which he's done twice this year. Good steal Manuel. by Strickland. Ball was knocked loose. It goes to Lauchs and a foul on Trippett. So Andy Lauchs, who's four for four on the year, has not missed a free throw. And this is senior year. We'll shoot for one and bonus. And two free throws here with one minute to go would put the ball up by eight and just about ice it. Hey, Joe. Uh-uh. <laughs> not with... 
Not with Bradley. Are you kidding me? No way. Are you in a hurry? They're going to foul him every time. But this this baby's well, not got a, over. They've got to score every time they get the ball. But there. this baby's not whether well, they foul him right away. This thing is not over for a long shot. Andy Lauk's only on his third free throw of his own. Of course, early in the year he shot two for Brad Neiman, who got decapitated at half court. Came in the ball game. Those were his first two. He hit the ball. Now, if I was Strickland, I would try to get Manuel to give the ball up. They got our score in a hurry. Hawkins from the Oh, game. dead oh, center. And they used their last time out. And you said this one might be over? Oh, that took three seconds. 85-78 <laughs> to score. And we've got 53 seconds left. Hawkins now with 23. Looked at 25 for Hawkins on his third three-pointer. Just adding up the three-pointers for Bradley. They had shot had made 149 out of 356, shooting just under 42% as a club coming in tonight to lead the nation in three-point shooting. Trippy has three. Manuel has three. Hawkins has three. And the lower the rep gives the ball. Ten three-pointers tonight. The ball. We're not going to get see what Joey said On the baseline, right? We still have one timeout left, right? We still have one timeout left. Screen, step back. Let's not start too early. The other thing is, on defense, let's really push it out on the wing. Let's deny the wings, right? Make them dribble the ball, penetrate. Yeah. Right? Be aggressive. Don't sit back and say, I hope they missed the shot. Get a hand up. Don't follow. Be a strong hand up. Be strong and be aggressive at the end of the ball game. Let's not be tentative. It's our ball game. We play strong and confident. Press offense. Go. Be hard, strong. Baby, hard, Run time out. Hard, two, three, hard. Come on, guys. Oh, yeah. You got to tell Of course, Joey talking about how to get the ball in at the full court pressure and obviously wanting to make sure they... Everybody sets their screens and there's no fouls and says to watch them jumping in front of you. And Bradley a little disadvantage now if DePaul can score because that clock will continue to run unless DePaul fouls because they have no more timeouts. And DePaul basketball under the Bradley basket. T. Green will inbound the ball to Edwards. Double team, grab. Oh, they call a jump ball. On the alternate possession, um, that, that's Edwards' fault. You don't really want to. Goes to Bradley. As soon as you get that ball, you want to clear it out of there. They're not going to continue to call fouls forever. And that looked like a pretty good call there, jump ball. And this is where you really got to grit down and play some D. Daniel Wilson. Um, oh, bad foul on T. Green. He is fouled out. Uh, he's going away from the basket, shooting a three-point shot. Let him shoot that shot. 14 points, T. Green fouls out with 46 seconds to go. And who do you put in the ball game? Brad Neiman, maybe? He's a freshman, but he's your best free throw shooter on the team. And you've got Golden and Brundy sitting on the bench, obviously, because they're not as successful from the free throw line. So the three coaches are over with Jim Lauderdale and Jim Platt. And he just out here for what reason, and it's going to be Kevin Golden for Oh, he's got Neiman. Well, he's moving Neiman up. He's, he's going to put Neiman in if they make the free throws, I think. And that way he'll have a, a great free throw shooter in there. And if they miss the free throw, they've got Kevin Golden in there for, for defensive and rebounding purposes. A two-shot foul coming up for Paul Wilson, who is one for three tonight. And a total of eight points. The one thing you want to do if you're DePaul when you get the ball inbounds is clear it very quickly. They made the free throw. You don't want to hang around the basket and allow anybody to double team you get that ball in and aggressively push it up the floor Neiman will check it and he makes the free throw he hits them both and here comes Neiman in the oh, that's, a, now. that's a tough spot for a freshman I don't care how good a free throw shooter he is coming in off Cole off the bench sitting there 39 minutes 83 80 Bradley back in it at the free throw line and they just barely get it in in time and a push is called on Trippy, and this time the freshman will go to the free throw line Neiman just yeah. Just stepped on the floor. He's been in there for one second. He's shooting a critical one and one. Now, if I would have been him, I would have kept that ball in my hand, dribbled it down the floor, got the feel for the ball. He's been sitting over there now for almost 20 minutes since after and hadn't had a shot. I would have kept that ball in my hand, feeling it around. These are two tough free throws. He has made 14 in a row and 16 of 19 on the year, shooting better than 84%. There's a little semi-ice there by Stan Albeck. He, yeah, he's out of timeout. That's right, he's out of timeout. Neiman steps to the line, he makes him step back by the substitution. Big free throws for the freshman. Off the heel. That's tough to come in. Bradley can tie with a three-pointer. Hawkins, out front, changes pivot, put Callaway with it. 
Working against Edwards. They set the screen for him. Now Neiman picks him up. Gets him rid of the shot. Trippy. Oh, he walks. Yeah. Manuel works by Trippy's screen. I don't know why they're looking for a three-pointer this early. I don't, that's really not necessary. That was plenty Ooh, of time. Wilson almost turned it over. Manuel driving one-on-one on Lobb. -one on Forced up a bad shot. Offensive a foul. Yeah, good call. Offensive foul on Manuel. He was totally out of control. His fourth. Well, the real, key, the real key will be here was he fouled on his shot. They'll go to the line. That's yeah, a, they are. They rule it after the, the shot. Here's the play. you got to let Hersey Hawkins have the ball here. Manuel takes it to the hoop. Andy Locks couldn't see there, got part of the ball, and then he charged into Edwards, and he's probably one of the main men you'd want to have at the free throw line. But I'll tell you what, Joe, even if he hits these two, it isn't over. You've got to play the D. 20 seconds to go. Edwards, the best free throw shooter among the regulars, shooting 81.7. Missed that one! The ball continues to miss at the line. You gotta play defense. Uh, They'll go to Hersey Hawkins, no doubt in my mind. Wilson finds a three quarter block, blocked up by Holland, and he's tackled at the back. There's a best with seven seconds to go. An and intentional a foul. A two shot foul, and the ball for DePaul with seven seconds to go. I don't know how many shots have been partially blocked for the Blue Demons tonight, but it's got to be close to 9 or 10. Well, I'll tell you something. The biggest part of that play was simply after missing a very pressurized free throw, Edwards gambled here that he could make another mistake, tried to block it, did block it. What a play by Kevin Edwards. There you see, there's the ball. Edwards comes across. Most people get tentative after they... After they uh, miss a free throw like that and make a bad play and another miss at the strike. Well, the Blue Demon free throw shooting is just horrendous. Oh, yeah. oh, the pair. This is still isn't over. Well, you got to get the ball into Edwards. Ball I don't care what you say. Seven seconds to go. DePaul has missed four straight free throws now, here in the final 40. These guys got to realize they still have a timeout to use. That's an intentional foul. That should be an intentional foul. It's a dead ball foul. That's Thomas right. is grabbing and Holland. And the ball to Lauk. That's a dead ball foul right there. And they call it. Another, they call it. There it is, an intentional foul. He wouldn't let go of him. I don't know why they wouldn't call it earlier. 17th in today's Associated Press Poll. And